a little bitty um, kind of uh, kind of a hick town you know uh, there was uh, not much going on uh, they didn't uh, have uh, very much of anything really uh, just uh, you know residential houses and um, and not many no, no restaurants no no nothing really it was really pretty uh, Spartan if you will and uh, it was it was it was nice and everything. I mean, I was a kid. I didn't I didn't need all that stuff. I mean, my folks were maybe a little more inconvenienced, I guess, because uh, you couldn't buy uh, uh, liquor at a or wine or anything at a at a restaurant. They had to go to a special place to do that or join some weird club or something. Yeah, I'm gonna change everything. with any sort of ambitions that grew up here, they always leave and uh, go to another city. When I was 17, the first thing I wanted to do was get out of here, so I moved to Memphis, which for, for me was much more stimulating immediately. I mean, musically and artistically, they actually have some sort of cultural foundation there. Well, here, it's, it's, it wasn't a priority. I mean, it was more about industry, uh, music, the music industry and uh, they're not so much interested in, in <laughs> sort of growing uh, their own vegetables. They like to get the vegetables already ripe and, and, and then pick them and put them in a can and send them out to the uh, grocery store. Folks, they were very big uh, supporters of uh, what little uh, classical music was happening here in Nashville, and uh, because of that, you know, they would make sure that I would take uh, classical music lessons. I really wanted to play a guitar and stuff, but my folks said, "Well, no, you really should learn, you know, a, a classical instrument or something like that. And if you still want to play a guitar in a few years, oh, sure, well, then you can play a guitar." Well, of course, a few years went by, and I'm ready now. I'm ready to 
get the guitar. And I was like, oh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then eventually, um, I, they gave in because I, I would pl take the cello and put it on my lap and, and strum it with a, with a felt uh, pick and had a little bottle and I would play like uh, Almond Rather songs on the cello with the bottleneck. And I guess it looked pretty pitiful. I, I thought it sounded really cool. My brother thought I was insane. Went to art school and studied sculpture and painting and drawing. And uh, then after that, I went to uh, get a graduate degree in uh, the same thing, sculpture and painting in, in Montana. I got back here, I guess, in the mid '80s, and, and I, I, I was interested in in, in 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 trying to make music. So I would start to go out and see what what's going on and what are these people doing. And I, I thought it was horrible. And uh, I, I, to me, they didn't seem to be uh, really being themselves about things at all. It seems to me that they were very much being what other people thought they should be instead of rather just, you know, dealing with who they are as people. And um, so eventually I thought, well, I'll try to sh do what I do and see how that works. And I, I, I just, they looked at me like I was like from outer space or, you know, f you know, from the moon or something. They just, they, they thought that, well, that's different. They just, they, they were expecting what they're used to, something that was, um, safe and um, and that they were accustomed to and that uh, you weren't supposed to uh, sort of tread the real world at all, you know, I mean, it was this sort of beautiful fantasy that they created and stuff. Wow. I, I try to focus on, on things that have to do with just maybe small details that maybe they overlook or maybe they think are unimportant or weird or strange when to me that's what describes the situation maybe in a little more you know maybe even a little more clear you know I mean um, I know you would probably want an example or something but I, I, it's just I mean I, I, I think that you could write a song about a shoe this particular shoe and it can it can be very descriptive of the shoe, and it's it's it, the way it's worn and why it's worn in these certain places and and where these scuffs and stuff come from. And it can tell quite a bit of story about a particular person and a, this particular working person's life. But you don't have to necessarily spell it out. I think people are smart enough to figure it out for themselves. I don't think you have to go, well, I'm a working man, you know, and you can you can say it in other ways than that or. Uh, I work hard all day, and then I'm tired, and then I go to bed. Raise hell, woohoo! I'm a country boy. We all know love is free. I guess you're frying chicken. I hear those people ring. Conversation, listen. False security. Breezes of the past. Impossibility. Reminds us of what's best. just get together as friends there would be two or three of us and next thing you know you know we'd meet someone else well why don't you come by and over the years it just I'm still saying well why don't you come by and play music and some people would come by and say well this is kind of strange and never come back and other people would just come back every week and we were just making noise together and it was pleasing to us it was fun but we, we basically had to decide uh, well what what is this music that we're doing? What do, what do you call it? Because, you know, and of course we had trouble describing it, but at the same time we started to think about, well, who are we, where are we from, we're from Nashville, you know, what, uh, what are we doing here? Well, it could be, you know, 
kind of a country music kind of a thing. We, and then we started to think, well, is that what we're doing? Well, kind of, but maybe not in the same way. And you know, then it's, it's ever growing, and you're always asking yourself the next question. The idea of a pop star, I don't know if that really occurred to me. I just like the idea of being able to play, to play music. I thought that was great. I mean, without, I mean, it wasn't like a dream of mine to ever do anything like that. I mean, I just thought it looked like fun, and gosh, I like to do fun things. I was basically trained to be a, a teacher at the college level. There were very few jobs, so I had decided to just kind of figure out, well, I must have learned something in all those years of school, and it turned out I learned how to work with wood, so oh, you? sort of drifted into you know, doing wood floors. I'm this guy who just, uh, I, uh, I'm a laborer. Uh, I uh, just drink blue c collar beer, you know. I'm, I'm, you know I'm, those things are fine with me. I'm very at home with that, you know. I'm not an intellectual or I don't want to be perceived as an intellectual. Um, you know, I'm, I'm just a normal guy. You know, I just happen to write these songs, you know, and make, make you know, make music that maybe a little, maybe it sounds odd, but it's certainly its intent isn't meant to be that way at all. Yeah, there comes a boom and sound. From underground, uh -uh. now it emanates from a kind of welfare state. The soul, your baby of the soul. That sweet, sweet soul. Let's be 
certain the deliberate monologue As sure as if it will fall Across you Unto you Well most certainly leave the you in small minority of, of uh, kids who had really long hair and um, and um, you know just didn't didn't really us want I, I didn't feel proud of where I was from or anything the, you know the 60s in America was a, it was just a very turbulent time and uh, suddenly um, things were, were sort of turned on its on its head Nixon represents a certain period of time in my life and, the, and, a, and a, a certain period of time in music as well. Sort of a, a deplorable human being as far as, you know, the trust that he was given as a president of the United States and, and the kind of trouble that he got into. And, uh, you know, I'm sure, you know, that's all being said, I'm sure that there's part of, part of what he was that was uh, he had a family and a wife and kids and they loved him and uh, supported him so he's obviously more complex a person than that up with people was a uh, um, it was a, a group of uh, singers that uh, would uh, they uh, go around tour around the country and they would talk about you know good kind of clean cut american values and uh and how what what a great place it was to live in the united states and all this i don't know what they meant by up with people but to me it meant uh, well it's sort of yay 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 children yay people you know it's a you know continuation of uh your life and through a child or something. in my head I want to take a bottle from the bar room to my bed I want to know the flavor 
feel the stinging on my tongue. See scattered dumbness of another evening left undone. This is not poetry. Is depravity. This is an outrage. This is unsavory. I am escaping my own trappings. Takes an old man to bend the sapling. Yonder, a ghastly mask, a shape undone, a human pile of hair and cum. This wicked man has become unwise. Your silhouette. Between her thighs, we are now going. We are not growing anymore. Anymore. So wipe your mouth. Bottles empty. You're innate. On the tree, and to the lake, through the house key, your mistake, their morality. You know, when I went to art school and stuff, and I was surrounded by all these wonderful creative people, and a lot of them were preoccupied with sort of. Uh, other things that had nothing to do with what I thought had nothing to do with, uh, you know, making you know, objects or pictures or whatever. Dirty dishes that lays a vessel on its side. I think a lot of friends of mine at that time who were also trying to do the same thing had had this weird idea that. You know that you had to suffer and 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 starve and whatever in order to create you know interesting you know work whether it's art or whatever and uh, I always thought that was kind of a weird idea. I, I thought, well, why can't you be like everybody else and have a job and still do these things? You know, I always thought it was possible that you could do these things and not be a freak or a weirdo. You just be a normal person and. Uh, so it was difficult. I mean, uh, I, I realized that well, I, I don't make very much money, and I, you know, I'm, I'm not a very handsome man, and you know, all these kind of things. And I'd come to terms with all that, and it was, after a while, I just you know, it didn't. None of that mattered really. And uh, as soon as I sort of stopped worrying about it, everything, was fine. <laughs> you really are know your timing, don't you? Jimi Hendrix gives the performance of his life. We celebrate the 30th anniversary of the Isle of Wight Festival next. 
All right, country soul crossover really gets much of an airing. Is there indeed such a thing? Well, if you want an idea as to what to expect from this hybrid, stick with us for Lamb Chop playing live in the studio. You may remember these guys if you watched this show because they were the backing band for Vic Chestnut when he came in. Ring any bells? Well, these guys have been around for more than five albums. Their latest is called What Another Man Spills, and the track they're about to play is called The Saturday Option, which is basically about having sex. a disaster and you won't get there any faster mine is a lazy bum fuss that's been left out there you know the rumpus and do the shabby thing with you separate from the screen and do the shabby thing with you separate the lily from the dew yes that was the best shot bleaches mixed with apricot To authorities who maintain a set priority and do the shabby thing with you. Separate the wood from the screw and do the shabby thing with you. Separate. Chestnut on rhythm guitar that was lamb chop.